Let's talk about ambient occlusion. For those of you who are PC gamers, you've probably seen this term a lot in the graphics settings of some of your favorite games over the last, I'd say roughly decade and a half. But what exactly is this setting and what does it do? To put it simply, ambient occlusion, or AO for short, is a computer graphics term for what's essentially an indirect lighting technique, specifically designed to simulate the effect of darkness that occurs in corners of rooms, crevices, intersection of objects, etc., in parts of an environment where there's no direct lighting. You can see that this is a pretty robust effect, but when did it start showing up in the graphics settings of games. Well, to answer this, let's head back to 2007, when one of the most graphically demanding games in history was released, The Legendary Crisis 1. The original Crisis was the very first game to implement ambient occlusion in a real-time setting. It's called Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, or SSAO for short. SSAO was invented by one of Crytek's high-caliber graphics engineers, Vladimir Kayalin. It's a post-processing effect, which means that it's applied to your screen after the lighting, geometry, and shaders are rendered. So as you may imagine, the game industry adopted this effect and spent the next decade enhancing it in a variety of ways. But the important thing to remember regarding AO is that it's not a real-life phenomenon. AO is just an approximation of an even more powerful, more sinister computer graphics technique, global illumination. Yes, global illumination, or GI for short, it's basically a term that refers to the way a computer can accurately reproduce the way light behaves in the real world. And it's usually achieved via ray tracing. Now, ray tracing is something we've only recently been able to successfully implement in real time with things like NVIDIA's RTX or Unreal Engine 5's Lumen. But I'd say we're still a good couple of years off until global illumination can look just as good in video games as it does in movies. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow if you haven't already, and keep an eye out for my next video where I talk about reflections in video games.